Hello, I am Dr. Beatrice Kramer and I am the founder and president of Aging at its Best. Today I would like to address what seems to be a common notion and that is that taking care of a sick parent uh, or of a person who is approaching the end of life is the same and compatible as taking care of a baby or a child. Now I would like to clear uh, that that is actually not the same. First of all, the difference is that if you're taking care of your parent who is approaching his or her end of life, then of course there is a role reversal, meaning that the person that you are now taking care of has been the person that was taking care of you during all of your childhood. So that is a dynamic that in and of itself can be already quite conflictuous. Doesn't have to be, but can be. Secondly, uh, the person that you are taking care of, your parent, uh, has to give up some sort of control. Now, that, of course, is a little bit of a problem, I think, for everybody. That is understandable. Um, and the difference between your parent and uh, a baby is that the parent had already experienced control uh, and uh, autonomy during some point, or probably during all uh, of their lives. So, therefore, giving that up and having you be the person uh, in charge is a pretty difficult step for the person to make. So handing over the key for the car or uh, you know, taking care of their finances is a big thing for them. Finances actually are a big step for everybody. Um, now, we've been talking about Kubler-Ross's five stages uh, of grieving uh, while uh, approaching death uh, during the last few weeks. And then, of course, it depends on where in that process, in which stage uh, that parent of yours is finding themselves in. So if the person is still in denying, in denial, then of course, you know, there is nothing to give up because that person actually does not accept or see or take into account that there may be anything wrong or that there may be a need for help and support. Um, so that is uh, quite conflictuous, obviously. And then if the person is in the anger state, of course, you know, there might be uh, some um, stressful situations, um, some fights, some arguments coming about, um, and that is not so easy to handle. Then, of course, there is bargaining. So it might be that the person says, well, you can have my key, but I will be taking care of the finances myself, and meanwhile, you actually know that finances are not as good as they should be. Uh, or they say, well, you know, you can take me to the doctors, uh, but the medical director, you know, stays in my hands, and you're not the one to to make decisions. You know, these kinds of things uh, may be then bargained out and negotiated. If the person is in the depression state, then there is not really that much to do because when that person is in the depression state, it is actually best to leave them in the depression state so that, you know, they can go through that stage and then, you know, approach the acceptance um, of their uh, coming death. If the person is in the acceptance state, well then, of course, you know, there is a good chance that there is agreement. Um, but all of that, of course, is not to be taken into account of, uh, when, you, when you take care of a baby because, or of a, of a child, because none of that is actually really an issue. Uh, so yes, there is a big difference. And then, of course, you know, it also depends on where you are within those five stages um, of the Kubler-Ross's model. So it is not as easy as people would think, and therefore it is not really um, compatible. You have 